Good evening, welcome to Weekend Primetime News. I'm Sandro Ferdinando. Now, before we get into your stories in detail, let's take a quick look at your headlines. President says capital punishment will be implemented irrespective of any obstruction. News first, come at the V-Force initiative begins from Sigiriya. TNA MP approached with 50 million rupee bribe. 418 pages of the Sri Lanka Singapore Free Trade Agreement missing. President Maitri Pala Sirisena has stressed the decision to enforce the capital punishment on drug peddlers will not be reversed no matter what obstruction comes before the government. The construction work of the National Nephrology Hospital in Pulnaru commenced under the patronage of the president. National Nephrology Hospital in Polonarua is constructed using Chinese funds cost 12 billion rupees. Two or three weeks ago, a proposal was put forward to cabinet seeking permission to enforce a capital punishment on drug offenders who have already been sentenced to death by court. Cabinet approval was given and the entire cabinet applauded the decision. Now we have that power. This morning I had a look at the newspapers. The Sunday issue of one of the national newspapers on their front page reported that the government is to hold its decision on implementing the capital punishment. That is a lie. No matter what obstruction that we face, the capital punishment will be implemented. A committee comprising the heads of law, the judiciary and prisons will be appointed. That committee will decide who will be given the capital punishment. The committee will act on those matters. Therefore, no matter what obstruction is before us, we will not reverse that decision. The president also revealed another tranche of aid that is given by the Chinese president Xi Jinping. I was informed that Chinese president Xi Jinping had sent another gift of 2 billion yuan to be used as we please. I was told that project reports must be given in a week. That amounts to 48 billion Sri Lankan rupees, which is 48,000 million rupees. I believe it would be wise to implement an island-wide housing program. I will prepare a report to use the 48 billion rupees to construct houses in all districts and give it to the Chinese ambassador. One million rupees will be allocated for one house. There will be a house in every electorate which is constructed under the same plan. Gamadha, a public service initiative which brought the country together for social welfare, launched another novel concept today. The Gamadha V-Force was launched today with the objective of providing a platform for the youth to place the interests of the country before theirs and volunteer for a worthy cause. Gamadha V-Force, comprising of volunteers from all over the country today, set off to Sigiriya to undertake their responsibility of building the nation. Gamadha V-Force Gamadha V-Force members set off towards Sigiriya this morning. The cleanup operation atop the Sigiriya Rock and the Northern Entrance Road took place with the assistance of the students from the universities of Muratua and Sri Jawadanapura. The operation took place under the watchful eyes of the Central Cultural Fund and the Department of Archaeology. V-Force members took steps to carry the bricks which were brought for renovations of the rock fortress to the top of Sigiriya. Though we bring bricks from 300 to 400 feet below, we need to carry them right to the top. Our resources are limited. Today's operation made our efforts more easy. At a time when our heritage sites are buried on purpose, the steps taken by V-Force to conserve these sites is of paramount importance. Usually, a media institution does not engage in such a task. This is an example for others. The strength of the youth can be utilized for such endeavors. There are many important sites in the country that are in need of conservation. We have been given an opportunity to be a part of this. The team from Gammad who came here successfully completed their task 
without causing any harm to the archaeological sites. Moving bricks to the top of the rock is a strenuous task. The removal of debris in the area took place successfully under my supervision. Following the cleanup process around Sigiriya, the volunteers were presented with medals to recognize their services. This will provide an opening for the medalists to spearhead similar projects. Even though I feel tired, I feel happy with what I have done. We didn't believe we would be able to perform such a task. The next program will be to clean in Chilau and we will attend that as well. On the 18th of August, Gamma the V-Force will take part in the Chilau Beach Cleanup Project. Gamma the V-Force Gamma the V-Force Our heartfelt gratitude to all who came forward in the name of unity, friendship and responsibility to make the Gamma the V-Force a resounding success. Gamada V Force Question of the Day What is the country funding the construction of the National Nephrology Hospital in Polonaro? A China B India C Japan D United States of America. People in the Kalani electorate are very respectable. I am disappointed that you have portrayed your fake position of army commander and misled the youth. Do not assume that I have left Kalania. I am right here in Kalania. Back then, former President Mahindra Rajapaksa and I were escorting the president of Myanmar. I looked at you and said you are one with no gratitude and I asked why you were contesting. The Navy commander will bear testament to that. You were like a cat at that moment. You had a pistol with you. I'm not afraid of you, Fonseca. Do you recall what happened to you when you visited the Kalanian temple? I have been silent all this time. How many votes did you secure? Are you worthy of being an MP? I will inform the UNP leadership to produce a person who can at least speak rather than fielding jackals. What you just witnessed was a remark made by Mervyn Silva on social media with regard to Minister Sarath Fonseca. Today, while attending a development program in Kalania, Minister Sarath Fonseca responded to this statement. The people of Kalnia are aware that Mervyn Silva is insane. He is the one who brought about ruffian politics. Kalnia is a sacred city. He is the person who introduced the culture of extortion, attacks and looting to this area. The day his name is erased from the history of this country, there will be freedom for the media and for politicians. Such germs caused massive destruction to the country. There is no point in filing a case just because a dog bites. Since the dog is biting everyone like it has been infected with rabies, I will be taking legal action. TNMP MS Mandiran speaking at an event in Jaffna made the following comments. <laughs> False reports are being spread over the new constitution. Yesterday, we responded to them in parliament. The response was carried by all the media. That is a good thing. However, one media institution reported it in a distorted manner. That is what I was told. At a time when we are making efforts to create a constitution that would reach political objectives, there are forces working against it. Yesterday, a news report was carried in a manner that supports that force. Everyone is aware that this channel is reporting matter with the aim of creating doubt between the two leaders and topple the government of good governance. That channel is reporting that there is a conspiracy against the president and that the UNP, TNA and JVP are working together to remove the president from the proposal of this new constitution. <laughs> Parliamentarian M.A. Sumandiran is stating that our revelations on his actions are false. 
but there are many questions surrounding his conduct while serving as a public representative. The discussion paper of the constitutional amendments prepared by the expert panel was rejected by the steering committee. Of the three people involved in the process, one is M.A. Sumandiran. When this discussion paper was raised in Parliament, MP Dayasiri Jayasekaro said what has been drafted is a coup against the President where the Prime Minister, Speaker and Opposition Leader can remove the Head of State. Another MP said one member involved in the process was not even in the country for six long months. The Opposition has alleged that most of the signatures in the documents are forged and question the right these members have to in fact draft a constitution. The opposition, in fact, went to the extent of highlighting that this was being done by Sumandiran to protect the Prime Minister and curtail the powers of the President. This is not all. In April, when the motion of no confidence against the Prime Minister was taken up, his support was also for the Prime Minister. The opposition openly criticised this move and stressed Sumandiran acted to protect the Prime Minister. His questionable conduct does not end with that. M.A. Sumandiran appeared as counsel for Central Bank employee S. Padumanapan, who faced allegations of being involved in the Central Bank Treasury bond scam at the Bond Commission. Sumandiran also appeared for Padumanapan in court as well. It was M.A. Sumandiran who postponed the debate on the Central Bank bond scam in Parliament, stressing the need of the Tamil translation of the report. The question that many have is, how does he not understand the content of the English report when he himself makes statements in Parliament in English? In addition, it is widely discussed that Sumandiran, along with Dr. Jayampada Vikramaratna, were behind the 19th Amendment to the Constitution to serve the purpose of the Prime Minister. Are these not enough to question these MPs' conduct as a public representative? The civil society has time and time again stressed that such dishonest politicians should not be allowed to hold office. Are the revelations made at the Bond Commission false? Are the revelations made regarding the 19th Amendment to the Constitution false? Are the revelations regarding the constitution itself false? We challenge MP Sumandiran to prove that these allegations are false or it would be confirmed that his statement is in fact false. The media reflects exactly on your behaviour. If you do the correct thing, we will report it and at the same time, if you do the wrong thing, we will not fear in reporting that as well. We would give the option to MA Sumandiran to reveal himself of the perks he enjoys from the government. The Nida Sevaka Sangame of Sri Lankan Airlines has pointed out that majority of the airline employees were being given very low salaries, while the monthly basic salary of the Sri Lankan Airlines CEO is 3.2 million rupees. Following an order from the Right to Information Commission during the hearing of the RTI appeal, it has been revealed that Suren Ratwatta, who served as the Chief Executive Officer of Sri Lanka Airlines, enjoyed a number of benefits, including a vehicle and fuel allowance. It has also been revealed that the cost of personal flying training for the A320 jet conversion, borne by the company on behalf of its former CEO, Suren Ratwatta, is $23,568, US dollars, which is almost 3.7 million Sri Lankan rupees. In addition, it has been disclosed that other top positions in Sri Lankan airlines also enjoyed massive salaries and benefits. Despite the attempts made to conceal the details of the salaries of the top management of Sri Lankan airlines, all the details have been revealed to the trade unions and other factions. We request that an investigation take place to ascertain what services was rendered by these people who enjoyed high salaries. There is a large number of employees at Sri Lankan airlines who only receive a pay of 20,000 rupees or less. If the government is paying 4 million rupees to the CEO, why can't they give a reasonable pay for the other employees? We warned the government this issue could grow to an extent where flights at the BIA could be disrupted. Professionals claim that the recently signed Singapore-Sri Lanka FTA by the Ministry of Development Strategies and International Trade has not been made public in its entirety. Professionals say, though the ministry claimed the Sri Lanka-Singapore Free Trade Agreement consists of 1,500 pages, the document made public comprises of only 1,082 pages. Were the 418 pages concealed deliberately? I was told the agreement comprises of 1,500 pages. I was charged for 1,500 pages. 
However, they gave me a report of 1,082 pages. It was given to me as if the other 418 pages were not relevant. If you take a look at the agreement article 17-13, clearly states the agreement includes annexures, appendix, side letters and protocols. None of those documents were given to us. In addition, there is no cover for 1,082 pages. This has become a merger of documents. This is clearly an attempt made to mislead the cabinet, parliament and the public by concealing certain sections of this. There are allegations that when the agreement was signed, the cabinet of ministers too were misled. Isn't concealing a certain number of pages from the agreement concealing information from the public? Reports have surfaced that Secretary to the Ministry of Power, Dr. Suren Bhattagoda, had given special instructions to settle an outstanding payment of Rs. 840 million to a private power plant in Amilipitia for obtaining electricity without PUCSL approval. CEB Deputy General Manager Sujiva Bevikrama, who strongly objected to the payment, was interdicted earlier this month. The long-term agreement to obtain electricity from the private power plant in Amilipitia expired in 2015 and it was renewed for another three years following an agreement reached with the CEB. However, for the purchase of electricity from the private power plant, the CEB must obtain approval from the Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka. Yet, until now, the Commission had not given permission for this. The Deputy General Manager for Energy Purchasers at the CEB, Sujiva Abevikrama, had opposed to make the payment in such a backdrop. And speaking to News First earlier this month, he said, for this very reason, he was interdicted. Since there was no approval obtained from the Public Utilities Commission, I informed my additional general manager, Kari Vasam, that I cannot release the funds. He said since the CEB had purchased electricity, it is mandatory to make the payments. I said I cannot do so without the legal contract. Following the interdiction of Abe Vikrama, CEB General Manager A.K. Samarasinghe on the 17th had written to the Secretary to the Ministry of Power, Dr. Suren Bhattagoda, seeking special approval to settle the payment. Though Dr. Bhattagoda had given permission, his letter had noted that there were administrative issues with regard to purchasing electricity from the power plant in question. The energy requirement in the country cannot be solely met by hydroelectricity. We are making attempts to make procurements at a low cost to the government. The amount given to the power plant you are referring to is also low. If we procure from a fresh power plant, the cost will be even higher. Parliamentarian Sinitambi Yogeswaran made the following remarks in Parliament yesterday. We are aware construction work began for an ethanol factory in the Kumurumunai area. This was being done by Arjuna Loisius. When I opposed the construction, I received a phone call offering me 50 million rupees to keep silent. The Adiva procession organized by the Capital Maharaj Organization Limited with the aim of enhancing national coexistence entered its third day today. The procession carrying the Vela Yudhi past Hatton, Ginigathena and Avisa Vela and is expected to reach the Pinatum Peter Shri Shiva Suganyam in Colombo late this evening. The Adiwell procession carrying the Vela Yudhya, symbolizing the Vela Yudhya that was held by the Kataragam God, commenced its journey today following special observances performed at the Trayton Siddhi Vinayagar Kovil in Kotagala this morning. The procession will move towards the premises of the Capital Maharaja Organization Limited on the 22nd, where devotees will be given the opportunity to obtain blessings. Up next is our special segment, The Voice of the People, where we highlight the issues gone unheard by the authorities. Voice of the People. News from across the nation, reported by News First regional correspondents. People living across many villages in Deyandra Mathura depend on the cinnamon industry to make ends meet. 
Though it was an industry that generated a great income some time back, the drop in cinnamon prices has posed a threat to the continuation of this trade. The cinnamon cultivators claim the main reason for this issue is that intermediate personnel retaining massive profits. This is a hanging bridge located in the Bulat Kohupitya Divisional Secretariat area. Many from a number of villages in Andurapola, Levala and Kambi Adia use this bridge to move across the area. However, the bridge has been in a dilapidated state for many years. In 2012, the foundation stone was placed for the construction of a new bridge. The construction was limited to one single concrete beam. Voice of the people. News from across the nation, reported by News First Regional Correspondents. Manu Ganesan, the Minister of National Integration, Reconciliation and Official Languages, says he is prepared for the Provincial Council elections. He made this comment in response to a question posed to him in Colombo yesterday. The local government polls are over. We need the Provincial Council polls. We are ready and the people too are ready. You are well aware who does not want an election. They have been met, but I did not say as 100%. There is more time. We will be in power for another one and a half years. We will remain thereafter as well. The government will not die. We respect the relationship between the brothers of the Mahindra Rajapaksa family. But that relationship will be detrimental to them as well. The symposium on law and business titled Colombo Law Biz 2018 took place today as well. Comments were made on making complaints to investigate dumping. How do you move the Director General of Commerce right, to investigate an allegation of dumping? You have to make a written application to the Director General accompanied by a fee. This is like a plaint. You need to tell the Director General because otherwise they can't investigate it because you know we have to hear all the parties. So once we have this information or the Director General has this information, the Director General will then ask for a response from the exporter and that is the reason why it is necessary to give the DG all of this information. Then of course, if nobody complains, right, the Minister may direct an investigation as you say, there are lots of these reports in the press. It's being talked about everywhere. People are making noises in parliament. So in those circumstances, in special circumstances, even without an application, the minister may direct the director general to initiate an investigation, provided, of course, that the DG submits to the minister evidence of dumping. So again, you can't have a bald investigation. You need to have evidence of the dumping. And the DG must thereafter recommend and investigation. The event was organized by the Colombo Law Society. A design thinking workshop took place at the University of Mortua this morning. The workshop was organized by Mora Ventures, the startup incubator of the University of Mortua. The event saw the participation of students, staff of the university and other universities. This workshop was facilitated by Chris Derwing from Germany, who is a Slascom resident entrepreneur. Heimin the Jayabira, the senior fellow in innovation and entrepreneurship at the University of Moratua, and Dr. Tusita Sukatapala, the director of enterprise at the university, contributed to the workshop. An ambitious project to clean the Bear Lake perimeters was launched today by the No Kunu campaign. The cleanup took place with the assistance from three armed forces Sri Lanka police, civil defense force, and volunteer groups. Employees from the Colombo Municipal Council and many volunteers took part in the cleanup operation. Uh, there are several drainage pipes that release waste to the Bearer Lake. Rather than dumping those garbage at those sites, the people in Colombo must act wisely. If they did so, this issue will not have arisen. <laughs> A 
A protest took place today with the participation of a large number of people demanding the Gaul International Cricket Stadium be protected. The group demonstrated by obstructing the Madra Colombo main road from the Gaul International Cricket Stadium. The protesters demanded that authorities protect the Gaul International Cricket Stadium. As a result of the protest, a two hour traffic congestion was reported on the Madra Colombo main road. According to a correspondent, Parliamentarians Chandi Mibirakkodi, Ramesh Patirana and former parliamentarian Geeta Kumarasinghe were also present at the scene. Later the crowd dispersed after a promise was made that the stadium will be protected. Money was not released for any development projects in Gaul. As the people of Gaul, we feel that clearly a program is carried out to destroy Gaul. We are against this initiative of destroying and selling the Gaul fort to foreigners. A media briefing took place today with the participation of environmental organization and the political authority in the Mathale districts to raise matters relating to lands in the Nakas range be given for investments. Giving it to the private sector is not suitable. The Alcado plantation company has already done two projects. We have to plant crops which suits us in order to protect this area. We took a decision after the president convened the secretaries of the ministry, soon after the ministry was changed, and we said not to start this project. Now it has been stopped by 100%. Minister Lakshman Kiriala convened a press conference and challenged the media. The historic Kataram Tannavava, Dankandavava and surrounding areas of around 35 acres have been sold. We challenged the minister to provide answers on this matter. But this is how the minister responded to the matter. Show us where this has happened. Not with facts. There are no facts to claim certain areas were given. There is nothing about this. Nothing to say. Not done yet. But no point in talking after it is done. Don't you remember Will Patu? We called the press conference today on the Knuckles Reserve, not about every problem in the country. And with that wrap up news for tonight, do join us again tomorrow with the very latest. Do take care and good night.